point to null. Hmm. And then when we go, dis and so no memory allocation, no freeing, and then when we go to get rid of the old memory block, all we need to do is dump this and all of its pointers and all, so we don't need to do any freeing there. Okay. And this can be very efficient. Uh, and we, we had to do, um, this machinery was actually kind of brittle. Uh, we had to use template machinery to annotate um, STL containers like vector and list as supporting this fast constant time swap uh, and then we had to take advantage of it. So I call it the swap optimization. Um, and it, the thing is, it wasn't. You can it wasn't, see why we don't let him name products. Like, exactly. <laughs> <aren't you? laughs> yeah. We'd end up with Visual Studio 2010 uh, Most Triumphant Edition, <laughs> Galaxy <laughs> Class Edition. Excellent. Um, most excellent, yes. Uh, but this isn't generic because if you're a user and you have your own type, um, even if you had a very efficient constant time swap, um, you couldn't annotate it. Uh, to take advantage of this. We actually fixed that in SP1. So in 2008 SP1, if you know all of the right um, almost undocumented machinery, I documented it once in a blog post, um, you actually can take advantage of this. Uh, but it still requires explicit action on your part and the machinery is pretty br uh, rather brittle. So in C++ OX, new standard, things are different. If you have a vector of anything, and so it could be a vector of vector int, but it could be your own type, let's call it foo, v. And say v has got, you know, say four elements, and your foo's own memory, they own lots of memory blocks, and you push back a fifth element in your vector, which has run out of capacity, we need to allocate more space. In this case, we would allocate six elements. And then we need to deal with copying these elements over to the new memory block and then getting rid of the old ones. And in C++ OX, this is accomplished through move construction. Mm. So in C++ 98, your foo would have a copy constructor that has this signature. Sorry. Foo taking const reference. And this is a copy constructor. And in C++ 98, the original C++ standard, um, that was all that was available. So we had to copy the elements over and then destroy them by invoking the destructor of each element. Now in C++ OX, if you provide a move constructor that has this totally new signature that looks like this, This one is copy, this one is move. Then when the vector undergoes reallocation, the STL's own machinery will try to move. So if you don't have a move constructor, but you do have a copy constructor, then we'll select that and you'll get the existing C++ 98 behavior, potentially slow, um, but the correctness of your code won't be hard. But if you go and write a move constructor, then the STL will pick it up. And in that move constructor, you can do something like this. If you're writing, I'm writing foo's move, uh, move constructor that looks like this, it takes an other. Thanks to this signature, you know that other is a temporary or it's about to be destroyed. So you can steal memory from it instead of copying. So suppose that I've, this just has you know, some blah pointer member underscore p. This is a foo's only data member. Um, inside uh, the move constructor, you can simply say, my pointer is going to be your pointer. And then, so that I don't get a double free, your pointer uh, P is null. So we come in with other owning some blah. And then what we do is we construct a new foo, set its pointer, mull this guy out. And then when it's destroyed, it doesn't have to free anything. And foo is left owning the blah. We've simply moved its ownership over with just a fast pointer twiddling, just two assignments, and we're done. Excellent. So if you provide this move constructor, 
Vector will automatically take advantage of it, and it will do the pointer twiddling, and reallocation will be very fast. And so what I, what I like to think of it is as in v, uh, VC10, Visual C++ 2010, um, the standard library um, has taken advantage of our value references in two ways. There's the supply side, where standard library types like vector and list gain move constructors and move assignment operators. Um, so if you're simply copying them around, um, those uh, move semantics will be activated and their internal data structures will simply be moved around with pointer twiddling rather than being copied. So that's more efficient. But then there's also demand side. So in things like reallocation of vectors, they will pick up move constructors and move assignment operators on the types that they're given, which could be other standard library types or could be your own types like foo. Mm -hmm. So uh, for, the, for cool. the former, all you need to do is just recompile it with VC10 and your code will instantly be faster. No action necessary. Oh, and with the demand we'll side, be fast. Well, we're not going to uh, sign uh, my house. Yeah, By, hopefully, yeah. hopefully fast. Hopefully if not, fast, uh, file, a, <laughs> file a book because I do want to know about that. Um, but with the demand side, all you need to do is write a move constructor and a move assignment operator, and we'll pick that up, and then you'll get the performance improvement for your own type in a much more uh, solid and universal way than the brittle and very focused optimization in VC9. Very, so, very nice. Yeah. So maybe while we're here now, we should, we're talking about R value references. Yeah. We should talk Unique about... Pointer? Well, you, I was thinking of that and okay. also perfect forwarding. We should get to there. I know it's... Um, a, yeah, perfect forwarding is a, a good example. Uh, interesting well, name. Yeah. Perfect forwarding is exactly yeah. what it says. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And we'll, we'll get Stefan to start a little bit more to the left this time. So I, right. mean, yeah, I always run out of, I need to reallocate. I need exactly. to move. Watch me do a, a reallocation here on the fly. There you go. <laughs> nice. That doesn't give me any more space, though. But it starts you further to the left. Yeah, I guess so. OK. Um, so with, with perfect forwarding, um, this is a C++ OX technique that's also powered by R value references. And this is very unusual that a single core language feature, just the, the R value reference, you know, T ref ref, um, is enabling both move semantics and perfect forwarding. Completely different things. Move semantics is all about, I want to optimize things by just twiddling pointers and moving blocks of memory around instead of copying them. And perfect forwarding is all about writing very generic code that as I, I like to put it, accepts arbitrary stuff and passes it to some other function, which will then do things with those arguments. So the problem is what if you want to write some you know, outer function that's going to take, and let, let's just fix the number of arguments to like two. So you know, some argument A and then some argument B, and then I'm going to call an inner function with A and B like this. And let's make it really simple and let's say we don't even care about the return time. It's just always going to return void. And we're living in C++ 98, old school. Uh, how do we declare outer? And we want to be at least generic enough to uh, handle our arbitrary types. So this needs to be a template. So we know we're always returning void, but we want to handle arbitrary types A and B. We want to take two arguments of those types, whatever they are, and then call some inner function, maybe do some other work here that I don't care about. But the core thing that this is doing is calling some inner function. So how do I declare these guys? Well, I could write this, const A reference, const B reference. And that's great and awesome. but what if inner wants to modify its arguments? What if inner has been declared as taking something like string reference and int reference? Okay. And then I try to compile this, and I am calling outer with some string stir and some int uh, like n. So outer will compile, and it say, oh, I'm going to take const string reference and const int reference, then I try to call inner. And I try to pass these const references to inner, which wants to modify them. Ooh, const correctness violation. 
no, 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 this will not compile. 